Hello Internet, welcome to another tutorial on antennas and electromagnetic field theory. In this tutorial, we'll study pointing theorem and pointing vector. We know that energy can be transported from one point uh, that is from a transmitter to another point that is a receiver by means of electromagnetic waves. But during the process of transferring of electromagnetic waves uh, <clears throat> some energy uh, shakes hand uh, in the environment now which which totally uh, conforms to the uh, energy conservation arguments and this is what pointing theorem and pointing vector is all about we'll study how electromagnetic waves are propagated into the air what determines its direction and how uh, how energy is lost when electromagnetic waves is transferred and what is the cost uh, that we pay for transferring energy from from one place to the other so let us begin the discussion by by mm, by first mentioning the very important point that pointing theorem or pointing vector is one of the most important applications of Maxwell's equations. Uh, I'm writing down the curl equations, the third and fourth equations of Maxwell, uh, because these equations talk about the time rate change of energies. This equation talks about the time rate change of magnetic field intensity and this equation talks about the time rate change of electric field intensity. So. I'll first derive the pointing theorem and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about the physical interpretation of the terms in the pointing theorem. The derivation is pretty simple. In the first step, what we do is we take up uh, equation number 2, let us say, and we dot both the sides. by E. Uh, that gives me E dot del cross H and on the right hand side I get this which is pretty simple. Now we take help of a corollary for two vectors A and B. Now according to this corollary we have I'll talk about this in a minute. Let me just write down this corollary. Now this is a well known um, vector identity and if we substitute A as H and B as E so this point is important I'll mark this with another color so if we substitute A as H and B as uh, electric field intensity in this vector identity then what we get here is uh, and substitute uh, we, we put A as H and B as E and substitute here in equation number 3 what we get is now this is a little rearrangement 
uh, because we have taken this term on the left hand side and the right hand side remains the same. I'm going pretty slow so that each and every step is well understood. Now what we do is this is uh, we can stop this thing right here and we dot uh, the equation number two this one with h now what we did with e we're going to do it with h so i'm left with h dot del cross e is equal to h and this thing over here is rearranged as this now this is very important part all right now we have the value of h dot del cross e from the above equation so we're going to substitute the value of um, this here so I'm left with Alright, now this little rearrangement has given us a few terms. Uh, this is the term that we were uh, looking for to get the pointing vector because E cross H is the well-known pointing vector. So it has featured in this equation and there are a few other terms. So we'll rearrange these terms now and then we'll find out the physical interpretation. Now for the sake of clarity, I'll uh, I've already rearranged and taken the volume integral of the equation that I just showed you. So on the left hand side, I'm only left with uh, the divergence of E cross H over a volume. Now this volume integral has been taken on top of the equation that we just saw and on the right hand side also we have taken the volume integral but now you can see uh, the terms are divided into two um, parts one part is this and the other part is this so we'll talk about the uh, interpretation of these and once once this part is done then the final step is to apply the divergence theorem only on the left hand side because we would want uh, to see e cross h vector only uh, within the integral sign so taking the divergence theorem here this uh, divergence of this vector goes away but it is now being taken over the surface integral now if we were to understand the uh, by the way this is the uh, pointing theorem and this equation is known as uh, the pointing theorem's equation. The term on the left hand side is the total power leaving the volume and it makes total sense. I'll write it down. Total power leaving the volume because uh, the power is going to leave the volume through its surface. So e cross h is the total power carried by the electromagnetic wave that leaves the surface of a volume and the term right here which which is a 
which is a combination of the electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity uh, this is the rate of decrease in energy stored in electric and magnetic fields and the, this last term here which features the conductivity um, it is known as the ohmic power dissipated so what is happening here is uh, if you consider a volume through which uh, our electromagnetic wave is passing then when the electromagnetic wave enters when the electromagnetic wave enters this volume it has some energy and when it passes through this volume and leaves the the surface of this volume uh, it dissipates some energy and because of that dissipation of energy it has been able to travel this much of a distance it has been able to uh, transcend from one location to the other and that dissipation of energy uh, which which is converted into displacement is is divided into two parts the first dissipation occurs uh, at the electric and magnetic fields there there is a dissipation of electric and magnetic fields there is a rate of decrease in uh, energy stored in electric and magnetic fields which causes this wave to move forward and the second dissipation is the ohmic power dissipated so if we were to uh, draw this we could draw the ohmic power like something like this with a resistor sign so this is going to be the ohmic portion of the power which is dissipated within the this volume and then just for the sake of graphical understanding we could show some electric stored stored electric energy being dissipated also and stored magnetic energy also being dissipated so this is e and this is b so everything has a cost associated with it if uh, if a vector is moving forward if e and h magnetic fields are moving forward they can only do so by by dissipating some energy by by providing some energy to the environment and that is what is told by the pointing uh, theorem and uh, finally the e cross h uh, because of the courtesy of a cross product will result in a vector known as p uh, again pointing vector very very popular and this follows the right hand thumb rule if e is in the direction of x and y is in the uh, h is in the direction of y this is uh, going to be in the positive z direction so you can find out the pointing vectors direction using the right hand thumb rule where where e will move towards where e will move towards h and the thumb will point towards the direction of propagation p is the uh, energy propagation direction and this is this is extremely real um, theorem where uh, the propagation of energy dissipates o over a length of uh, distance otherwise an electromagnetic field uh, could go on forever and ever uh, in the space if dissipation of energy would not occur in electromagnetic wave so pointing theorem is extremely real makes sense is practical and it tells you that the total power leaving the volume by an electromagnetic wave is 
is because of the rate of decrease in the energy stored in electric and magnetic fields and the ohmic power dissipated. Well, uh, I hope the derivation of pointing vector and pointing theorem was of some help and if you liked the video then please consider subscribing to the channel and you have a good day and a good life. Bye.